Hello YouTube, it's Christian. We are back. It's Tuesday, which means it's time for another episode of Multifamily 101. Today will be a short video, but extremely important. This is on the actual mindset and how you buy the first property mentally. It happens in your head before it actually happens on paper. Again, welcome back, Brandon Thank you. Yeah, to the channel. So the easiest way to become a real estate investor is in fact to buy real estate. Most people do miss this. Um, it took me a long time. When I got started originally, uh, I decided in, oh, what was it, 2015, 2016, yeah. I want to be a real estate investor. In 2020, I finally bought a duplex. Awesome. It took me a while. At least you bought a multifamily. At least I bought a multifamily, but this big roundabout way of, I worked for CoStar <laughs> and I worked for land.com and all these real estate things. I was like, I'm building my way there. I'm in real estate. Uh, you don't have to add all those steps. In fact, that's part of why I originally partnered with Cody because I met the one teenager who was already buying 30 units. Like right. he, yeah. he skipped the whole step of, you know, why add steps? Let's just go for it. So uh, Brandon, yeah. Yeah, and Cody and I actually, I don't know if you mentioned before too, is we had a 78 unit in Lexington under contract at one point Wild. before you two connected. Uh, then we had a 16 unit um, under contract in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes, I heard about that one. Uh, that was uh, kind of a shit show. <laughs> but we got out there and the agent felt bad. And I'm actually still in contact with that same broker that Cody introduced us to. And um, we may have an eight unit still on the table out there, but it's kind of small. But anyway, it's good to make those connections. Yeah, but you have to you have to make that decision in your head. Like Cody did it really young. It took me a little while. Brandon, how old were you when you finally got... I, I've never actually heard your backstory of like how you started. When did you decide you want to go into real estate? When did you actually buy real estate? I would say I was 30. Uh, my buddy and I were looking at... We were going to Vegas all the time. And he hopped on Zillow and saw a condo for like 30,000 bucks. He's like, dude, we could put this on a credit card. Let's just go over there and look at it. Turns out it was a total piece of crap, right? And the agent we connected with showed us a condo for 80,000. And at the time we could we could buy it for 10% 10, uh, 10 down, so 8,000 bucks. Yeah. And it was gonna cash flow like 100, 150 bucks a month. So we bought that and it, it worked and we should have probably cookie cuttered in that over and over, you know, but uh, anyway. Lesson learned on yeah. multifamily versus condo investing. But the main thing is you got in the game. Like you, I got in the game. We pulled the trigger. We went over. We took action. We made offers. And we bought something. How long after you bought your first property did you buy your next property? Uh, I'd say about uh, 18 months. Okay. 18 months. And then did it snowball after that or was it pretty consistently every year to two years? Well, there's property? a little interesting story. So my your partner's Cody. Yep. My main partner is my brother. Yes. You're a little bit of yin and yang. I would be buying something every week if the opportunity came up, a good opportunity. My brother's a little more hesitant, a little more cautious. So he keeps me in check. And we've been steady as we go. You've mentioned, I mean, I've mentioned before, I'm up to 30 doors Yep. all behind you guys. And uh, this is about five years in the making. So it's, it's a little slow for us. Well, and that's just fine. And caution doesn't doesn't hurt. Like it's not easy to buy a ton of real estate and manage all the stuff that we do. Right. Um, I'm on the very back end of trying to line up the the last of our cost segregation studies and our tax stuff and partnership returns, and it's not an easy way to do it. Yeah, you guys went light speed. That's great. I mean, right yeah. Where you're at. But uh, you you take some pain with that. The main thing is though, you basically you set your goal and you need to know what that goal is. And the goal is beyond unit count. The goal is cash flows. Absolutely. Dion McNeely, yeah. who's on this channel all the time, he has 16 units, he cash flows about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars a month. I mean that 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 does it. For most people, you're done. Um, he doesn't have any LLCs, no partners, uh, all 30 year fixed rate debt. That's a great place to be. And I think what I learned too, Christian, is that once I stopped focusing on unit count and focusing on the cash flow i made better decisions and took that burden off that i need to get to 200 300 a thousand units so yep. i just need to get i just need to get to my passive income goal and who cares what the unit count is yeah i think if we're doing rules for, to get into these uh to get into multifamily get started the first thing you make the decision in your head what you want to get to and i, I found the best thing to do is that is a monthly cash flow number what right. what dollar amount do you need to make on a monthly basis some people go like, hey, I want to make like 150 a year. Really think about what do you spend monthly? What do you want to be able to spend monthly? Create a plan to that. Like Cody and I get a lot of attention for buying a lot of stuff. But my goal is to teach people how to do this and show people what's possible. I'm trying to push the limit because that is my, that is all I do. Right. That's not for most people. If you buy a property a year, a property every 18 months, you scale strategically, slowly, 
you're going to have a lot less pain, a lot less time invested, and you can get to the same place in five years that Cody and I got in one. Yep. It all starts with one rental though, right. and you have to get that first one. So once you set your goal, just go buy a cash flowing property. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be a home run. We've shared that many times. Yes. <laughs> it just has to be a property that makes sense for you. And if you can do that, I think you're going to be just fine. The level of confidence you will gain just by taking that first step, that first, buying that first property, how you'll, how you'll feel uh, going forward is, is amazing. So yeah, it, trust us. It's, it's absolutely addicting and super fun. You can do this with or without a lot of money in your pocket, but very, very excited for you. If you're about to take this journey, don't do what I did and add a bunch of steps. You don't need to be a licensed broker. You don't need to be a loan officer. You don't need to have a job in real estate. <laughs> you need to know how to evaluate a deal based on basic addition, subtraction, and division. And right. so, okay, what, what does the property bring in? What are the expenses? Does it cash flow day one? Can I get it in long-term debt? If you can do that, buy that property. It could be a duplex. It could be a 38 plex. Whatever it is for you, that first one within the next five years, I guarantee you, you can have financial freedom. That is uh, Michael Blanc, law of the first deal. Absolutely. Yep. Totally true. Uh, but that's the encouragement for today. Again, short video. So appreciate you. If you're still watching here, like, subscribe. We're going to have more videos and longer videos in every subsequent week. Thank you very much.